welcome to our beef update. John Grimes, Dwayne Rigsby here. John, we're talking about vaccination programs today? Yeah, it's uh, something I think is seasonal. Uh -huh. uh, we're at that time of year that uh, calves are being born, so when we think of that, what's not too far along after that is breeding season for next year's calves. And mm -hmm. we need to make some preparations for the breeding season to hopefully increase uh, fertility and, and, and conception rates, because uh, I think I've mentioned this before in previous programs, if a cow doesn't deliver uh, a live, healthy calf every year, it's kind of hard to pay the bills. That's so true. we need them to get bred to have a chance uh -huh. to do that. So, okay. so that's the theme of what we're going to discuss here over the next few minutes. Uh -huh. uh, so and it'll be geared more towards the health background vaccination program for the breeding herd. You know, we need to set some goals in our herd. And these are, in many cases, what I would call ideals. Maybe not uh, reasonable in some people's minds, but I think this is a goal to shoot for. Uh, when we talk about heifers, virgin heifers, when we breed them for the first time, most of the time we're talking about a reach in puberty and breeding around 15 months of age. Our goal is having them calve as two-year-olds. Okay. That, uh, with their first calf. That's when they're usually physically mature. But mm -hmm. when you go to breed them for the first time, they should be weighing close to two-thirds of their mature Weight. So if you think this female can weigh 1,200 pounds as a mature cow, she ought to be 800 pounds uh, when you breed her for the first time. I mean, that's okay. like, they, yeah. they call this yeah. the target weight concept. Okay. Uh, generally, we like to see you breed the heifers a little earlier than the cows. So say say you want to calve starting March 1. The first thing is ought to calve are heifers. And why mm -hmm. we do that is because usually once they have their first calf, they're a little slower to get rebred than the mature cow because okay. they're still growing, they're lactating right. for the first time, they're under more stress. Mm -hmm. um, shorter is better when it turn, c comes to breeding season. If you say 65 days, that seems, uh, by most people's standards, a little on the short side, but a, a beef animal cycles, has a, has a estrus cycle every 21 days. Yeah. So that gives you three shots to get that heifer bred uh, in her first season. Okay. Uh, Cows uh, typically will stretch out a little more uh, uh, because of complicating factors. When I say complicating factors, they, they're lactating. Did they have an easy birth? Or did they have more difficulty having the calf? Sometimes when you have calving difficulty, it makes it a longer amount of time for them to come back uh, in estrus or, or in heat, uh -huh. uh, is what most people know when they're receptive to be bred. Uh -huh. uh, so, but the target is we want that cow or heifer, they, we want them to calve every 365 five days. Okay. Uh, so if it came on March 1 this year, I really wanted her to give March 1st or earlier next year. Mm -hmm. And to give you an idea how long, or the time frame we were working under, gestation is 283 days. Okay. That's how long it takes from the time they're bred to they have a calf. Well, for the time they have a calf, to be able to do that, they got to get bred within 80 to 85 days from the time they drop a calf. Mm -hmm. They've got 80 to 85 days, so you've got so a really lot a short, to get to short time. Short time. Mother Nature will let you do it, yeah. but you got to help sometimes along the way. That's what we're yeah. going to talk about. Okay. And then at the end of the day, after you got them all bred, calved out, and wean them off the cow, we're talking about a, a 15 month process here roughly uh, mm -hmm. from the time you breed them till you take them away from them as babies. Uh, we'd like to have 90% of what you started out with. If, mm -hmm. if you had 100 cows, we'd like to have 90 calves. That's kind of a, because they're not all going to get bred right. unfortunately, and unfortunately you may lose a calf or two along mm -hmm. the way. So that's some goals. Okay. Now, when we talk about vaccination, this is just a shot of a refrigerator with lots of different medicines and drugs in it, and basically all I'm trying to say here is we've got lots of options. Options. Uh, there's different brands, there's different strains of things we're going to shoot for, mm -hmm. and uh, if you notice real close, in the upper left-hand corner, you see that circular dial, it's got some green and red on it, mm -hmm. that is a thermometer, yeah. and so most of those products have a label warning about what temperature they should be stored at, they should be stored. and that's just a refrigerator that they're double checking. They're yep. not, you can stick your head in there and say, oh, yeah, that's cool, but you don't know, you exactly, don't know exactly what the temperature So I think that's a, if you, a lot of farmers have refrigerators at their barn or their farm shop. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those are used refrigerators right. yeah, and leftover. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea yeah. to, have a, to have a thermometer in Certainly there. Certainly makes sense. The other thing I want to emphasize is a relationship with a vet. I think it's really important. Uh, you know, I don't know all the drugs, uh, the brands, the different. Uh, positives and negatives yeah. so having a relationship with a vet that can help you out with the management decisions we call that the vet client patient relationship mm -hmm. and I always 
always joke about this, but if uh, somebody called me at the extension office, wanted to know how to, to, to treat a sick calf, I've got some personal background, but at the end of the day, the vet's the expert. Yeah. If your child had the flu, you wouldn't call me on how to treat it for the flu. You yep. would call the family doctor. You'd call the family, yeah. So that's just a, a little plug there uh, to make sure you have a good relationship with a veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about vaccines, and this is just some big picture stuff. Basically, as far as a lot of the reproductive type vaccines, we have two choices. We have killed vaccines and modified lives. And killed vaccines okay. are generally considered the safer product because they do not basically contain the live bug, the right. live antigen capable of producing a resistance in the animal. You're uh, adding an adjuvant uh, to stimulate the immune response, but the vaccine itself does not contain live organism mm -hmm. of that respective disease or disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the downside of these killed vaccines is this adjuvant a lot of times will cause a reaction with the skin. Sometimes you'll see a bump or a knot where you gave the shot. Mm -hmm. That often does happen with killed vaccines, and so you got to watch that. But uh, because it is a safer product, maybe a less volatile product is, is the way I would term it, uh, a lot of times it requires a second booster uh, okay. for, for proper immunity. Right. So uh, uh, those are some things to keep in mind with killed vaccines. Uh, some other things, uh, generally you don't get quite as much protection uh, as you would with the modified lives, but it's, you've got a bigger window uh, it's generally less risky to the normal animal yearly cycle, and I'll explain that here in a second. Mm -hmm. um, probably economically, one of the big uh, advantages is uh, if you have a bottle, it depends on how big your herd is, whether it's a 10 dose, a 25, or a 50 dose, Killed vaccines, you don't have to use it all. I mean, it's already mixed. Mm -hmm. It comes to you ready to use. You can draw it out. As long as you store it at the proper temperature, mm -hmm. you can use it more than once. You can use one dose and not throw away the rest of the bottle. Okay. Because it's still mm -hmm. functioning. It still still mm -hmm. is a viable product. And when you say that, you're the farmer themselves is giving the vaccine. Or, the, or a vet. Or a vet. You, you, if, if the vet has given you permission to use mm -hmm. it, you can do it yourself. Okay. There's some, there's some drugs you can buy over the counter. Just like yeah. prescription right. drugs. Yeah. Some, some you, you have to have a prescription, and some the vet has to actually give the shot. Okay. So it, it depends. And it that's depends. why I said vary. that refrigerator shot earlier, you got lots of different options. Right. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about modified mm -hmm. live vaccines just a little bit. Uh, they contain the live engine. Uh, basically, you're shooting them with the disorder at a low rate to stimulate a uh, response. Uh -huh. So they develop their own uh, resistance to the particular uh, uh, disorder. These vaccines tend to provide a better immune response. I mean, you're, I, I don't want to say you're playing with fire, but you're putting a little more on the line, the animal, to help yeah. build their own resistance. Right. Uh, they can cause mild infections. Uh, and when I say they're not safe to use in all classes, some of these modified lives uh, you don't want to give to a pregnant cow because oh, yeah, the disorder we're vaccinating for causes abortions. Yeah. So we're, you don't want to. You, you got to give it to them at the right time, time. of their cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's gotcha. what I meant to before. Uh, <clears throat> that's that's a very big key with modified live vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, they do uh, give much longer and broader immunity uh, with one dose uh, than the killed products. Uh, now, in difference, uh, the modified lives, a lot of these, you'll get the two bottles. You'll get the dry product in the bottle, then you get the sterile additive to add in and mix it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we meant before. Usually when you do that, you got to use the whole bottle. The, it does not stay viable like killed vaccines. Okay. So if you, you have to do a little planning ahead. If you're going to vaccinate uh, 20 cows, you may have to buy two 10-dose bottles instead of a 25 or a 50. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you, so yeah. you use the right amount yeah. of vaccine. Right. Um, cows should be vaccinated after calving and before breeding season, so that kind of makes a very specific time when we vaccinate. Now, heifers, since they um, aren't bred yet, mm -hmm. you can do them earlier. Uh, generally, we like to have them done twice before the breeding season, and most products you'll see a, a warning, don't do it within 30 days of when you're going to start breeding, because it's got to get through their system. Yeah. So again, reading the label is such a such a big thing. you gotta, you got to read the label on all these products, because between brands, there are subtle differences in products. Now, I got a question, John. On the vaccines, is 
are they just like humans, I guess, uh, to where sometimes you just get the first shot in the first, you know, when we're real young and then we never get it again? Uh, or is this some, or, or maybe they're both, some you may have to redo after five years or uh, ten years? It depends. Okay. It depends on the d disease you're wanting to control okay. and how much pressure, you know, circumstances change. And we'll talk about it. We're going to okay. mention a few of these gotcha. diseases in a minute. But gotcha. this is just, again, part of the relationship with the vet. You can see these are probably farmers doing this work and, mm -hmm. and uh, they're given the shot in the neck, we talk about quality assurance. These are generally where the lower price cuts are, and industry wants us to shoot uh, medications in the neck uh, as opposed to their back or their rump, uh, where mm -hmm. more, some more of the higher price cuts are. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to talk about changing needles so we don't cross-contaminate animals. Uh, he also, some some products are intramuscular, some are just under the skin. So you got to oh. read that label to know okay. how, how we're going to give them. You see this animal has a tag. Hopefully the farmer's keeping records of what animals have been treated. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about just real quick some of the diseases we worry about as far as reproduction. I'll try to pronounce these right, uh, but most farmers know these by their uh, acronym or their abbreviation. IBR or infectious bovine rhinotracheitis is a, a commonly diagnosed viral disease that causes abortions. Uh, that's something hmm. that we need to vaccinate for. Uh, BVD, uh, bovine viral diarrhea virus, uh, can cause early embryonic death. Maybe they're not very far into their pregnancy, but uh -huh. you'll get an early term abortion. Uh, persistently infected, uh, or PI BVD, is really important to feedlot operators. They, that can cause a lack of performance on animals being fed for beef. It, they just don't do well. Uh -huh. uh, so this has multiple levels of loss to, to the industry. We worry about reproduction and also live animal performance. Uh, lepto or leptospirosis, uh, again, uh, can cause abortions, infertility, weak calves. Uh, these would be the three main, what I would call, reproductive type diseases. We, uh -huh. And you can get shots that, that have uh, these uh, disorders combined. You don't give an individual shot uh -huh. to five or six different diseases. You can get them in combination, right. and that's important to keep in mind. Okay. Uh, he, these are some other ones that are more respiratory or, or other uh, uh, BRS. Uh, again, a respiratory disease can cause death in calves. and calves. And some of these may not be as much annual shots after they're mature. These are probably more for younger cattle uh, that haven't fully developed their uh -huh. resistance. Uh, right. But you can still get these in combination with some of the other shots. Uh, Parainfluenza, PI3, another respiratory disease. And then Clostridia, a lot of people know this as blackleg. That's okay. a common disease in southern Ohio you'll, you'll see. And... Uh, uh, again, uh, that's something that's more of a, a young calf disorder, but we, we also vaccinate cows too. This is a relatively inexpensive shot that's just kind of one of those things. We know we have it around in the area. We just do it and, and protect the animals. So these are five or six main ones. The first three were more reproductive oriented. These are respiratory and uh, additional uh, mm -hmm. disease disorders. So we're doing all this, so hopefully this is the scene we want to see. A live calf just born. Uh, the cows obviously delivered to calf. The calf's, I mean, this, I, I took this picture several years ago. This calf was maybe out of the cow for 30 seconds. 30, yeah. And they're, the whole process is starting. And this is mm -hmm. one of the most fascinating things you can see. The yep. cow licking the calf, the calf waking up, and and hopefully here in a half hour, it's going to be up nursing that cow. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what this is all about. And again, we cannot pay our bills if this cow doesn't do this every year. Right. That's that's the whole key to this presentation is making sure we get that live calf every year and it's kind of that circle of life where we yep. just start it all over again. Yep. So that's uh, that's uh, what we were trying to get at today on this uh, program. Again, we always talk about the Beef Team website. Uh, encourage you to go to beef.osu.edu to check out uh, the different information there, our weekly newsletter that Stan Smith puts out, uh, the Beef Cattle Letter, a lot of good information on quality assurance. We talked about the vet relationships, uh, mm -hmm. that's important, events and calen uh, program calendar, our library, and then again, this video will be eventually posted on our YouTube channel, and the folks that are considered members of the beef team are there too. Great news, great topics as always, John. So until next time, this has been your beef update.